Hi, my name is Myrna Jope. I'm the ELD teacher at Rio Americana High School, and I'd like to share with you some of the documents that the district hired me to prepare over the summer for our preparation for distance learning in the fall. The templates that they provided for us, they wanted us to have one for a teacher hyperdoc to help you organize your ideas about teaching, and then the student hyperdoc to show, to organize the students' learning resources. So in taking a look at this, first I'd like to show you that, oops, I'm down in the bottom of it. Uh, we look at the learning targets, ELD standards, and I have also added the social justice standards as they pertain to different uh, units and clusters. Student resources at the bottom, supplemental resources for the teacher, and implement, implementation recommendations, which are expanded even further here in the teacher tips. Which is a long document, especially helpful, I think, for those who are new to teaching English learners. Um, having a relationship with the students first goes a long way. So when you start your class, I definitely recommend working on the team building relationships and making sure it's a safe environment for them so that they feel comfortable making mistakes in front of others because that's really the only way to, to learn. Uh, so the teacher tips will give you more detailed information for the different activities, how to use them. And it'll make a little bit more sense once I so show you the, uh, the student hyperdoc. So here at the top, I explain about the textbook. And one thing you should know with um, ELD in the San Juan district, Currently, we're using four different textbooks. So within English Transition 1, ELD 1 support, we have these two textbooks. And even with this one for lower proficiency, you might still need to provide additional support with Inside Phonics or Inside USA because students will still need you know, um, you know, letter phonics support before they can move on to reading anything. Each book is organized into units. And within a unit, you have three sections that they call clusters. Each cluster has two stories or a story and a poem in it. But for our condensed distance learning, I've chosen to only to focus on the first story or selection in a cluster. So again, this gives you an opportunity for enrichment or differentiation. If you have students who are moving more quickly through material, then you can also assign to them the second story in a cluster. So for explanation purposes, I'm going to show you the student hyperdoc for cluster number one here. It, the slide deck for each cluster consists of nine slides. The first slide is in green. It's just for you. You could use it if you wanted to roll this out with multiple lessons to a student, but I've just included it here so you have everything at your fingertips, if you will. So each lesson, 
the, there are three lessons. They can be, um, each lesson includes a can-do statement slide and the lesson slide of activities. Additionally, each cluster has an enrichment reteaching slide, which you can roll out to the students at your leisure. There's a slide for summative assessments. And then again, to help you implement the activities and teach the lessons, there's the teacher tip slide for you, which will take you to um, the hyper, the PDF that I'd already shown you about how to teach, you know, how to implement different things and some suggestions. So, because there are English learners, there are audio attachments for everything. So the students can read and listen. I think it's very important to give them an opportunity to be able to go back and listen to things over again. Um, more information here, the reason it's coded or color coded, this has to do with GLAD strategies, helping students visualize language. And um, additionally, trying to give them things that can work as sentence frames within these can-do statements. The next slide is the actual lesson. So the way I envision you using this is you could start with the can-do statement, perhaps do some independent reading, journaling, class discussion over what this looks like, practice with some sentence frames. Absolutely, there's a way to pull this out to be a complete lesson on its own as kind of a pre-teaching, or just use it as a quick introduction before moving on to the actual lesson slide. So in Google Classroom, I would create a slide deck copy out just those two slides to give to the students as an individual lesson. So this lesson starts with um, an entry ticket and an exit ticket. Each one of these lessons gives the students opportunities to listen, speak, read, and write, but also there are opportunities for formative assessment. Sometimes, um, there, there's usually an opportunity for students to get immediate feedback on some of that, you know, with the way it's set up in a Google form. But in things like this entry ticket, uh, it has, this is an opportunity for you to find out what the student already knows with some open-ended, uh, sorry, some open-ended questions. Whenever there's a form like this, you will be asked to create your own copy of it. And once you make the copy, the copy is what you will share with your students. For my entry ticket, hi, that's me. Um, on my entry tickets, I'm including a short little video that helps model the language that's going to be used in the questions. Very simple questions, very quick and easy, gives you an idea of what they might already know or be able to do. The second activity, listen, read, takes them to um, a dialogue that it's in the book. And here I would like to mention, we've got the book. This is a link directly to the online book, MyNG Connect. If you don't, if you're not already hooked up with the online book, then please uh, uh, connect with your TOSA to make sure that 
you do have access to this so the students can see the book online. It's extremely helpful. But so we've got it online. Hopefully they have the actual physical textbook as well. But even if they don't, you know, I've made sure to include PDFs of the pages that are um, being used for the different activities. So there's a dialogue there for them to listen to, and here's the audio for it. And then here is a little mini lesson on the grammar component, and it's made using Edpuzzle. And what is great with Edpuzzle is you can take any video and turn it into a lesson. So it, you just create your own free Edpuzzle account. And you can see here, there are certain activities that need to be done. There are two multiple choice questions and two open-ended questions. When you make it multiple choice, the student will be asked Singular to do something. pronouns, talking about one person or thing. So I just explained what singular pronouns were. And here it stops the video, gives them an opportunity to answer it. So sing, singular. OK, I'm going to go with that. Oh, no, it's wrong. But what I didn't do here, but what you can do is offer feedback specifically for that wrong answer. So you could explain to them why it's wrong. So they can skip this, they can rewatch and fix this. So there are opportunities for the students to um, self-check when you're using something like an Edpuzzle. Now Edpuzzle is free, but you can only have 20 videos. So um, while I have done the video here, future videos in um, the hyperdocs will not be connected to edpuzzle you will need to make your own question sets to work for that the next activity is um, vocabulary having the students note the vocabulary for that for that section and um, one way that I've had my students interact with it is a personal dictionary. And then hopefully I can get back to, I have to go back a little bit further, excuse me, while I do this into my templates. And, um, oops, sorry, went tutorials, where are my tutorials? There we are. Um, Personal dictionary is awesome. So I've got a um, short little video explaining how to use one. To use the personal dictionary, the student would type in the word that they needed. So they'd find a word and from the vocabulary and set. Click from the box above and drag down to get the translation. Similarly, they can type the word in their own home language. And um, you don't see it so well here where, as I've paused it, but there are on these uh, personal dictionaries, there are tabs to help them keep domain specific language easily organized. So when they're dealing with their math class, keep the math vocabulary in their math tab. What uh, I appreciate about them having the personal dictionary instead of just using Google Translate is that they have a permanent um, a permanent inventory of the language. But of course, you can do the dictionary however you like, but this will be um, shared with you. So from this list here are 
dictionaries that have already been set up to function in translating the languages listed here. Finally, the exit ticket is, um, again, students will be asked to make their own copy of this. And this goes back to how well they've interacted with the dialogue that was shared. And sorry, it takes a little while to come up. So this architecture was borrowed from what the TOSAs had created during our distance or distance teaching in the spring. So it, it helps prepare them for activities they're going to be doing on the LPAC. So the, the uh, audio files here are just explaining the instructions for the students. And then they come here, listen to the conversation. They've got questions to respond to. And this slide is live so that the students can type their answers in here. Granted, how I'm not exactly sure how this will look, how easily it will work for teachers to be able to, you know, just quickly look at what's how students responded to it. But, um, you know, it can be adapted into a Google form instead if you find that more convenient. So this all is lesson one. It should take only about 45 minutes to do. I think it would be great to, in your live session, to walk the students through it and then have them um, complete it in the rest of the, the course for that day if we are having these 90 minute classes as i think we're going to be having walk the students through it and then have them complete it and then you can move on to the next lesson the next day or do some enrichment or do some reteaching whatever you see is necessary uh, the second lesson is going to be working with the main story that we're covering within this cluster. So again, can do statements, lesson activities. There are always five activities to do within each lesson. And again, like I said, it incorporates listening, speaking, reading, writing. When you tie it all in with a live session and then let the students work on it independently. It also makes a great resource if somebody's absent, ill, needs reteaching, they can always go back to these things. So the vocabulary that was introduced in the last lesson is available here in a Quizlet set. And Quizlet is another uh, activity that can be used free, although you can do it as um, a teacher. And so here they're showing it $4.99 a month, but I know there's a, a less expensive annual uh, uh, fee for it. And what I do like about it is tracking student progress. Because when I create the sets and then assign them to the students and have them as part of a Quizlet class, I can see if they are actually doing the activities, if they have completed the different activities. Because with Quizlet, you've got flashcards and then different ways to interact with it. Um, two games that can be played independently and Quizlet Live, which students love. This is a great activity to do for a live session. But again, when you upgrade to teacher, you can see if the students are actually doing the activities that you've assigned. Um, now, this video is where I am actually reading the story to the students. And this is something absolutely that I imagine you would Hi. be doing in a live session with your students. But it's here as a fallback resource, a way for students to review it again, 
those who are absent could see it. Uh, and it's talking about the, um, you know, comprehension questions and um, understanding what you're reading, different things like that. Here we've got the PDF of the story with the audio so they can read it again because there is no one and done in this. They need practice. Um, and it's important for them to not just type everything, but to write it out on paper. So however you set this up, if you know they have a special notebook, make sure that they are physically writing activities. And we will be returning to these activities in lesson three, as I'll show you later. Now, another uh, resource that I really love is Flipgrid. And if you're not familiar with Flipgrid, there's the Flipgrid is completely free. Educator login, just log in, um, create an account. I just log in with my Google. And this is so user friendly and it's a great way for the students to respond to each other. So you're working with your collaborative piece. For example, I have an obligatory introduction uh, module that any student when they enter whatever time of the year they're going to be introducing themselves to the class and and uh, you know getting to share their home language with everyone so this introduction gets used throughout the year and if you look 641 videos I didn't have 641 students last year I had about 90 students that funneled through my classes throughout the year. But this includes the videos the students leave for each other, responding to each other as, uh, as they, and there'll be more of them here in the front, but you can see they have ways to speak to each other, talking back and forth. So this is a great way, especially now in, with distance learning, to feel connected to uh, the class. There are instructions uh, that, that are left, which ha include an immersive reader, so it can be read to the students. Uh, what I did not do here, but which can be done, and I've done in later ones, I can leave a video explaining to the students what they need to do. And I did in fact do that. I'll show you one of the ways I did that in lesson three. So that's lesson two. Moving on to lesson three, can do statements once again. And you know, have some i've got my audio in here but if you want to connect more with your students make it your own audio in other words when i read aloud i talk naturally i do not sound like a robot or speak so quickly that no one can understand me that's me talking to your students but maybe you delete these when you make your copy delete my audio files for the instructions and put your voice in there in order to connect with your students a little bit more so the final practice and application there's a reading fluency passage from the book and this is something that i use in um in the summative assessment to help track a student's uh, fluency, oral fluency. So here they've got an opportunity to practice with that. Now, as I said, they had their answers that they wrote on a paper. And this is where we go back to those lesson two answers. 
and they're going to respond on on the excuse me sorry lost my train of thought they're going to respond by showing you their answers and reading their answers out loud so this is a good way to see and here you know the video i did here i explained to the students i modeled for them how to show their paper and then read it so this gives you a good opportunity to track how they're doing with their activities uh, there's an online writing activity which takes them back to that story and um, using the comprehension questions from the story by making it um, the sentences are open-ended using pictures from the story or sorry some some sentences sorry some questions or multiple choice and then some are also open-ended questions to help you better track their understanding coming back to vocabulary again we have a quizlet quiz and one thing that i would have you check you know go over your class with this is talking about how to change up the options when you click on options you know what's the question limit how is the question presented do you show the images or not so you can make it extremely easy or a little bit harder pardon me i'm talking outside and that's uh, my neighbor's dog cubby and finally moving outside of the book looking to other uh, uh, other resources that are online. Uh, I found some really good things from BBC for English online. Oops, okay, restore, whatever. Sorry, continue. And again, these are some issues you might have to deal with. I had set this up so they would upload a screenshot. Uh, you might want to do this differently, but what's how this practice looks to the students they give their information i always have them make their write their name this is good practice and then this would be something you would need to model for them because if they close the quiz once they've opened the activity, they're not gonna be able to finish the quiz. It'll make them start it all over again, or sorry, this uh, practice field form. So don't close the tab and teach them, you know, open the link. So you need to be familiar with how these resources will look for them. For example, opening this link, um, there's a lot on it. And whenever you go to a link that's online from somebody else, like this one there will be ads on it so teaching the students how to find what it is they need for example here in the instructions i'm saying scroll down to game play the game and take a picture of your score at the end or whatever you want you know i just had them do the screenshot for some accountability there are two different games here you might want to go over everything that's in here with them first and then so there are options for expanding this um, or or keeping it a little bit uh, simpler and more independent so again uploading their screenshot now the students need to reflect on their learning so depending upon whether they say yes or no this takes them to another slide asking them to explain how they learned why and how i think are the most powerful words in a teacher's ensemble you know just if someone gives you an answer and you keep asking them why 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 to help them distill it down to the meat of the matter powerful learning So this is your practice. Now, if you've got somebody who's struggling a little bit, 
or has rushed through everything and done it really well, but needs more, that's resource four. This is an opportunity for enrichment or reteaching, however you need to use it. Uh, grammar and writing worksheets, this will take, I have set this up to take you to, that it takes you to the whole folder. You can change this up to only have certain PDFs attached here, however you'd like to distill it. Um, if you've got the student who has finished the first story so quickly, this interactive practice might work well because it gives you resources for the second story, which in this unit is uh, a portion of the balcony scene uh, from Romeo and Juliet. More practice, you could have workshop, worksheets and then take it to a different game. So there are a lot of opportunities here for you to work on this and, and add more resources and really differentiate for each of your students, make these slides individual for that particular student's needs. Resource number five is the summative assessment. So I have had, this is how I've tested my students when we've been using um, edge textbooks. At the end of a cluster, I have them uh, do a reading fluency. So that passage that they practiced with in lesson two is repeated here, but there's a rubric to help gauge how well the student is reading this out loud. There's a portion, an area here where you can give feedback. And I do teach my students how to make live links onto a document easily done with this here. And they've got Vocaroo, which is extremely simple. You just press the button to record, you speak and say what you have to say, click again to stop it. Button to record, you speak and say what you have to say. You like it, you can go to save and share. You don't like it, click here to start all over again. Um, now with the save and share, this is, I, I teach my students to just copy the link and then they come back to their document and paste their link. So this also is a nice piece to have as a growing portfolio for the students. Back to my doc. The cluster test is pulled directly from what Edge has made available. I've just made it into a used a Google form to make it into an actual quiz. It uses the images from the test, which if you um, pay an additional license, students can be doing this online within uh, MyNG Connect, but that does cost about $25 a student. Uh, like I said, everything here is what's from the test. The only thing that's different is I added a dictation part. So there's a mini video that, that they can play to hear the word, and then they need to write it down. Last but not least, um, so that's the end of all of these slides. If you have any additional questions about everything that went on there, that's where we have resource number six which is the teacher tips. So as you were looking through something, you know, we're on lesson one's activities. Here are some more uh, hints and suggestions for implementation, ways for you to um, personalize it for yourself. I, I just, you know, tried to give as much help as I could with this. So that is our teacher and student hyperdocs.
I hope they'll be helpful to you in your classroom. Thanks for watching.